All right, you guys, let's get into this devotional. God is good. Did somebody tell God that he's good? Did you thank him today? Did you even think about him today? Or did you just wake up and take life for granted? We do that a lot, right? We get so busy. We get so other centered that, that we forget. We actually can forget about God a lot. If you did, that's okay. Pause for the cause and give him thanks. I have been listening still to the book of Romans and uh, Romans, Paul talks about there's no excuse. We are without excuse, people. Even for, for atheists and agnostics, unbelievers are without excuse for Romans state by the very things that God has made. What he has created, this earth, the, the trees, right? The, the animals, us, they speak to God's reality, to his existence. So no, everyone is without excuse. I often say this, you take a young child and I don't care where this young child was born. I don't care what the nationality, the ethnicity is, what language is spoken. If you take a child that hasn't been influenced, and I know that's difficult, but if you take an uninfluenced child, maybe four years old, and you ask that child, who created the sun? I guarantee you that child will not say mama or daddy. Because that child knows, even as a young child, and that's faith, even as a young child, children know that someone bigger than you and I created the heavens and the earth. It is a gift from God, that natural faith. So we are without excuse, people. I know we can rationalize it away, but go ahead and pause this video. And you can even take your doubts about God to God. He is not intimidated. He wants us to take everything to him, people. Everything to him. So you pause this video. You spend a moment with Jesus Christ. And give him the glory. Even if you don't believe him, it's okay. Give it to him on credit. And ask the Lord to come into your life. Ask the Lord to open up your eyes and give you wisdom and give you an understanding and, and give you a heart to at least want to get to know him. And for those of you who do know him, keep on getting to know him. If you need to repent, people stop. Stop this video. Stop this video and repent before God. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to help you. Ask him to wash you. Ask him to have mercy on you. Ask him to extend grace upon you. When my kids call me up, and I know this is, isn't about Queen Elizabeth, but when my kids call me up or whoever want me to pray for them. See, some of y'all may not want me to pray for you. Because <laughs> if I know something about you and I know what I know about you is not right before God, I'm going to call it out. I can't sugarcoat it. I can't overlook it. I can't sweep it under the rug. I treat myself like that when I go before God because I'm naked before him. You are naked before him. He see you. He know you. He know your thoughts. Ask Jonah if you can run from him. And Jonah will tell you, you can't run from God. I believe King David said, where can I go? If I go up there, you are up there. If I run over here, you're over here. If I lie down, you're there. If I go to hell, you there too. We can't run from God. So why try to? People, God is not intimidated by our circum life's circumstances, how we feel, how we think. Give God a try. Give him a try. That's the least you can do. Because, you know, when I think about Queen Elizabeth, and I just adored her, I did. She was everybody's grandma. Many of you know I lost my grandma last year. And my grandmother was, like Queen Elizabeth, a nanogenarian. 
a person in their 90s. What a blessing to live and live that long. And Queen Elizabeth, she had good health. I mean, two days before she died, she met with her prime minister, right? Standing, I think she was using a cane, but to be able to live almost a century and to still be able to stand on your own two feet and at my knees, oh Lord, Lord, strengthen my knees. <laughs> I think she had better knees than I had. <laughs> but when I think about Queen Elizabeth, different scriptures came to mind. And one scripture that came to mind, and I have my scriptures here, and I will read them for you. I'll also have them in the description box below. People, read your word. You are missing out. If you, if you don't get into your word, let me tell you, you are missing out. The Bible is fascinating. Sometimes I don't want to read anything deep. Just go to the Bible. All of it's for our edification. <laughs> Let me tell you, they had some real issues in the Bible. Just like you and I got issues, they had them first in the Bible. Pick up your Bible and read it, people. But when I think about Queen Elizabeth, you know, um, I found myself thinking and praying, Lord, I want to be like her. She is a wonderful example. And it's interesting because many might think, well, who want to be like a woman almost 100 years old? We don't normally think of role models like that, right? <laughs> you know, we don't normally, I mean, the role models today are singers, are worldly people. But when I thought about Queen Elizabeth, I was thinking, you know what? Wow, I want to be like her. And these are some scriptures that came that came to mind, right? You all know Queen Elizabeth. She was the queen of England and reigned 70 years, you guys. I believe, well, she's the longest reigning female monarch, I want to say of all time, but definitely within the last several hundred years or whatever. But I want to say once again, all time. It's only one person, I believe, reigned longer than her. She reigned 70 years. That's a long time. Ooh. And being a female, being a queen, and being a grandmother that reigned. Oh, to me, that just speaks volumes, right? People, it don't matter how old you are. You can be 60, 70, 80, 90. God can use you and unto death like he used her. But when I think about uh, Queen Elizabeth, Romans 12, verses 12. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Okay, it might not be verse 12, you guys. But anyway, I'll have the scripture linked below. Let me read this for you all. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters... In view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Hmm. To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. When I think about Queen Elizabeth, that scripture came to mind. When we think of royalty, we think of fantasy, right? The print and the princess, the knight in shining armor. We think about being waited upon, dressed in a crown, and having all these attendants around us. And true, of those things may be. But what a lot of people don't realize is when you wear that crown, you don't belong to yourself anymore. Hmm. You do not belong to yourself when you wear that crown. And I want to be like Queen Elizabeth in the, the respect of, to me, and she, she, she was a Christian. I think everyone knows that. She gave her body as a living sacrifice for that crown. But she gave up 
herself, her identity, her dreams, if she had any outside of being queen, she gave that up. People, we are called to give it up as well. She gave it up for the crown, but we are supposed to give it up for the cross. What the crown was to Queen Elizabeth is what the crown should be to us. Our crown is the cross. But she gave up her identity. Me and my husband, we just finished watching The Crown a couple months ago. We had never seen it before. We zoomed through all the episodes. And now my husband, he's like a lover of the royals, in particular Queen Elizabeth. And he cried when he saw the news. We were watching the news when it was reported that she was under doctor's supervision. We were watching it live. And then shortly thereafter, they announced that she died. My husband, yes, he cried. Because <laughs> he loved her after seeing the crown too and realizing what she gave up for the crown. You got to have a lot of respect. You know, I, I couldn't do it. Because my personal identity, my voice means too much, you know, to me to give it up. But you know what? As a Christian, I can relate. Because we are called to sacrifice, which means to give it up. Sacrifice, give it up. It means to slay as well, but it means to give it up as well. And that's exactly what she did. She gave up her identity, her personal aspirations. She gave up her voice, her voice. She couldn't say what she wanted to say, at least in public. She couldn't do what she wanted to do, at least in public. With that crown brought limitations and restrictions. But once again, she offered her body as a living sacrifice. Have you offered your body as a living sacrifice to the cross? Have you offered your body to Jesus I'm going to read a scripture that states, you are not your own. You don't belong to you. I know in this life, it's all about our rights that we have. But people, when it's said and done, and one day it's going to be said and done, many will receive the reality that it wasn't what you thought. You don't belong to yourself. Just like Queen Elizabeth, she reigned for 70 years but she sacrificed for 70 years. She was a living sacrifice for 70 years. How many days have you sacrificed to God? People, and if, if you haven't, it's not too late to get started. You can get started right now with a prayer asking Jesus to come into your heart, making him Lord and Savior. No, you're not perfect, and you'll never be perfect. But thank God, we don't have to be perfect. We should strive, right? We should strive to be as good as we can be. But God's, the life that he offers, the righteousness that He's he offered, it's through faith. It's through faith, people. If you don't have faith, ask God for it. The Lord will direct you in every other way. Another scripture I think about, and it's found in Romans 12 and 2, and it reads, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The part I wanna focus on is do not conform to the pattern of this world. Oh, goodness. That's a whole message all by itself. The conformity of it all, right? The peer pressure, the temptations to conform. Okay, what does that mean? Well, you have the world, and the world basically is the devil. The devil's thoughts, the devil's feelings, the devil's way of doing things which is always in opposition to God's thoughts, 
God's feelings and God's way of doing things. When we talk about the world, we talk about this flesh, right? The, the flesh represents our personal thoughts, intents, motives, and feelings. Talking about the spirit, that represents, you know, God's way of doing things. Well, the scripture states, do not conform to this world. Not to conform to the way the world thinks, feels, and acts. Whatever thoughts, feelings, and deeds are in opposition to God's word, we are told not to conform to it. I think about Queen Elizabeth. Once again, she reigned 70 years, so she saw a lot in her times. She saw societal changes, climate changes, right? Experienced different wars, political changes, moral changes. But did she conform? To make it plain and clear, like we have social media now. That's a like a new change. When I was growing up, we didn't have social media. We didn't have the internet, right? That's a new phenomenon, though it's been around over 20 years. It's still fairly new. But with social media, like Instagram, it can be tempting to conform and act the way you see people act and dress the way you see people dress on social media. For the younger population, it's all about showing skin the more skin you show well the more attention you get and it can be tempting even for someone older the temptation is there through social media to act a certain way to to be someone or be like someone well queen elizabeth she didn't conform she stayed true to the crown she stayed true to her identity, to her call, to her divine purpose in life. Once again, she sacrificed her voice. She sacrificed her identity. Whatever personal dreams that she had, she slayed them. She surrendered them. She gave them up for that crown. In one of the episodes in The Crown... Jackie Kennedy and President Kennedy visited Queen Elizabeth. And in that episode, Queen Elizabeth was portrayed as being intimidated by Jackie because Jackie was all glamorous and, you know, all beautiful. And Queen Elizabeth felt kind of, um, and it was funny to watch that because she's the queen, right? <laughs> you can't get no higher than that. But yeah, she lacked confidence around Jackie who was once again you know and I don't know about Jackie Kennedy I don't want to say she was fleshly or of the world but I am giving this example because the world loved the Hollywood the cameras loved Jackie for how she looked and probably how she dressed but Queen Elizabeth she stayed true to her simple dignified way she dressed to her makeup her hairdo she didn't have anything elaborate you know but she she carried herself like a queen someone true to the crown and if she wanted to she probably could have wore a lot of red lipstick and she probably did in her heyday i don't know <laughs> you know or if she wanted to she probably could have wore her skirt just a, a inch you know, higher, but she didn't. She sacrificed once again, and she did not conform to the ever-changing standards of the world. I mean, it was a time when women dressed modestly. That time is no more, right? Because you have people who are conforming, showing more skin, but she never did. She stayed true to her identity and her identity as queen she stayed true to the crown growing up in church we were told women couldn't wear pants well people let me tell you how i challenged that your girl had an attitude let me tell you <laughs> yeah women could not wear pants and i was young in the faith in my early 20s and i had a problem with that 
Because to me, and I know I'm getting sidetracked, but to me, wearing pants in the church had nothing to do with the heart. I do understand we should look a certain way, but, you know, you shouldn't be wearing your skirts way up here. Though I probably did that once or twice too before, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> but no, I had a problem with pants because I was seeing people just act a fool in church. But and these same people was really big on, uh-uh, you, you, you can't wear pants up in here. Really? So this is what I did one day. This was back when Mervyn's, right? My favorite store, my all-time favorite store. I loved me some Mervyn's. Hillard and Hanson was my favorite clothing company. Oh, when Mervyn's closed down, y'all, I, I think I went into depression. Because Merv, I was in Mervyn's throughout the week. And it was my thing. After church, I took my kids, went to Mervyn's. They, no store has ever had clearances like Mervyn's did. I still have some pieces. But I wish I had this one piece that I donated. By Hillard and Hanson. This is what your girl did, right? Because I was protesting and I was going to defy <laughs> this religious rule of not wearing pants in church. Your girl put on a Hillard and Hanson three-piece silk pants suit in the color red. <laughs> I had it in red, black, and another color. I put on my three-piece silk red pants outfit. And yes, I did. Walked my butt right up into church and dared anybody say anything to me. <laughs> Yeah, your girl had an attitude about that. But today, a lot of churches that did preach that 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 rule, they don't have it anymore. A lot of churches are now laxed up. So some might think, okay, are churches conforming? Hey, that just makes sense. God is not looking at your pants you are wearing. You know, keep it about Jesus. What I am saying is, Queen Elizabeth, once again, she did not conform. This world, the ideal, ideas and ideals of the world, it's forever changing. She didn't. The way she was day one was the way she was when she passed away. Another scripture that comes to mind, Romans 8 and 5. Do not live according to the flesh. Do not walk in the flesh. And this is what it reads. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. This reminds me of Queen Elizabeth. Once again, it goes back to she did not live, she did not walk according to the standards and the precepts of the world that was ever changing around her. Once again, she stayed true to the cross or the, the crown. She walked in the spirit of that, of that crown. And that crown, what it represents, it represents an ideology. It represents an institution. It represents a, uh, well, we know the monarch. It's been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. The crown itself carries an idea of being dignified, right? Morally right. It carries the connotation of, of justice. It carries the connotation of, I'm going to say, peace. And we know about royalty and all that. It has a standard. And she did not walk, once again, in the ways of the standards of the world. She stayed true to the ideology of that crown. People, we got to stay true to what Jesus represents. We got to stay true to the cross. Once again, what the crown was to her majesty 
is what the cross should be to us today. Queen Elizabeth, she fulfilled her duty up until the second she died. I know many was waiting for her to just give the throne to her son, her poor son, because he inherited the kingdom old already, like in his 70s. So we know that he's not going to reign nowhere near as long as she did. But while people were waiting, okay, when is she going to let her son be king? She didn't. She was faithful. She fulfilled her duty by not walking according, not walking in the flesh, right? But walking according to that crown. And she did it up until the day she died. I'm like, Lord, I want to do the same thing. I want to serve you. I want to follow that cross. I want to carry my cross up until the day you call me home. Is that anybody else's prayer? Is that anybody else's desire? See, I think about the queen and I don't know, she's the perfect example to me. And I know we have other people in our lives. We have our, our bishops, our pastors. We have people in our family, you know, that we, that we esteem to be like. But concerning a worldwide, I mean, she, she was a worldwide phenomenon. Once again, it states, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the flesh, on what the flesh desires. When you live according to the flesh, you are living according to your own thoughts, your own feelings, the world's thoughts, the world's feelings, which is always in opposition to God. But... For those who have their minds set on the spirit, in Queen Elizabeth's case, the spirit being the crown, she had her mind set on the crown. If she wanted to do something outside of the crown, she was always faced with the reality of what her purpose was, what her duty was, what her call was. And she put in alignment her own thoughts, her own feelings. She made sure it was in alignment with what the crown represented. I want to be serious like that with my walk with Jesus. No, I don't have literally the crown that she wore on her head. But one day, people, we're going to get crowns. Not one crown, but we're going to get crowns. I got a couple of scriptures for you. But we need to think spiritually minded about those crowns that we will get. One day, we can wear a crown, an incorruptible crown, people. A crown that can't be stolen, that can't corrode, right? That can't be taken from you. Once again, it states, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the flesh, on what the flesh desires. When you live according to the flesh, you are living according to your own thoughts, your own feelings, the world's thoughts, the world's feelings, which is always in opposition to God. But for those who have their minds set on the spirit, in Queen Elizabeth's case, the spirit being the crown. She had her mind set on the crown. If she wanted to do something outside of the crown, she was always faced with the reality of what her purpose was, what her duty was, what her call was. And she put in alignment her own thoughts, her own feelings. She made sure it was in alignment with what the crown represented. I want to be serious like that with my walk with Jesus. No, I don't have literally the crown that she wore on her head. But one day, people, we're going to get crowns. Not one crown, but we're going to get crowns. I got a couple of scriptures for you. But we need to think spiritually minded about those crowns that we will get. One day. We can wear a crown, an incorruptible crown, people. 
a crown that can't be stolen, that can't corrode, right? That can't be taken from you. So, we can't walk according to the flesh. We can't walk according to what we think and what we feel. Those thoughts and feelings that are in opposition to God's word. I don't care how good that may feel. I don't care if the world passes laws that says, you know, it's okay. Like it's okay to smoke weed here in my neck of the woods. And in many states probably now. I don't care that the law says it's okay. I ain't smoking no weed. I don't need to have my mind altered. I don't need to be um, incapacitated at any time. Just because the law legalized it. But my point is, just because the world says that something is okay, don't mean that it's okay with God. Do not walk according to the flesh. People that walk according to the flesh... They don't have their minds on God and on God's ways of doing things. The queen, when it was said and done, it was always about the crown that she wore. Also, Romans 5 and 15 states, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Now, Queen Elizabeth, was she really free? I mean, she was free. She was free to choose. Like her uncle, if you guys don't know the backdrop of the story, I learned it from the crown. <laughs> her uncle, he abdicated the throne for love. He put his flesh, he put his personal desires before his duty as king. He forfeited the throne. Some might say he forfeited the throne for the flesh, right? Because when you become queen or king, it's about duty. We hear a lot about that now. Everything is about duty. You have a duty. You must be dignified. She had a choice. She could have followed suit with him. She could have stated, hey, I don't want to be queen. But we know that she did not do that. The world hates Harry and Meghan because they're not acting the way they're supposed to act as royals. When when you take on that title for Harry, he was born into it. It don't matter how you personally feel about a thing. So what if you feel like this? You're not supposed to have a voice. We know they have spoken out. Royals don't speak out, right? So some might say, okay, they're acting in the flesh. They're acting in the world. And verse 16 states, so I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want to do. Yeah, it's the war between the flesh and the spirit. And Queen Elizabeth, she probably had a war between the crown, right? Wearing that crown and just wanting to be normal, wanting to have a voice, wanting to not always be perfect in the sight, you know, of the world. But for us Christians, we are told to walk by the Spirit. Walk in the ways of God. I can't iterate that enough because with the temptation and once again, the, the, the changing world around us, it can be difficult at times to stay focused. Like I asked at the beginning of the video, did you think about God? Because we can forget about God, which is why it's so important, people, that we pick up our word. I love the scripture. Work out your salvation with trembling and fear, knowing that one day it's all going to be over. It's going to be said and done, and that one day can happen right now. As a matter of fact, for many people, it's happening right now. Death is happening right now. Even for people who don't look sick, who are not sick, it's happening. It's happening. Matthew 16 and 24 through 26 states, and I love this. This is the Savior talking. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself 
and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, the whole world and forfeit his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? Jesus is talking about one day it's going to be said and done. It's going to be all she wrote, people. It's going to be all she wrote. And all that's going to matter is that you do, do what Jesus said. That you take up your cross and follow him. The queen, she picked up that crown. And I know it was it's beautiful, glorious, but it got heavy at times. It probably felt like a burden at times, right? And serving Christ. When you have to sacrifice, when you have to give it up, when you have to sometimes shut up and, and, and be silent and, and not have a voice, when, when you have to sacrifice whatever that may be to carry the cross, you might have to stop carrying something else so you can carry the cross. Jesus told us we are supposed to do that. If you come after me, Deny yourself, just like Queen Elizabeth did. She denied herself for the crown. We have to deny ourselves for Christ. That don't mean that we lose our personality. That don't mean that we can't have fun. That don't mean that we become hermits in the house and we can't do anything. I remember when I, and I'm going to share my testimony, but when I gave my life to Christ when I was 17, I had a pro and a con list. I'm going to talk about that in, in a different, another video though. But I thought life was going to be boring if I gave my life to Christ. And I told that to God. I'm like, I know if I serve you, it's going to be boring. I told the Lord that people, he is not intimidated by what we think and what we feel. Right? <laughs> but being a Christian, we do have to deny our flesh. We don't deny our spirit. We don't deny the good things about us, but we deny our flesh. We deny and, and rebuke and, and fight and ward off the sinful passions. And when we fail to do that, we repent. That's part of carrying that cross is repent. But we deny how we want to think, how we want to act. We deny it and think instead how Christ wants us to think, how Christ wants us to act. And yes, that might require giving up friends. That might require giving up jobs, certain types of jobs that don't please God. But you know what? When it's said and done, people, it's for our good. Like Jesus states here, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Now, you're not going to gain the whole world, but in your part of the world that God has blessed you to live in, you might gain the world in that sense, everything that you want. But what would that profit if you lose your soul? The queen, once again, she served that crown up until death. She gave it all up, up until death. She carried that crown to the point that she didn't even <laughs> give it to her son. She served that crown unto death. She denied herself up until death. And we can do the same thing, people. If you haven't picked up your cross, pray about it and go ahead and pick it up and follow Jesus. Galatians 2 and 20 states, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I have been crucified with Christ. The queen, she was crucified with that crown. Remember, she wasn't living anymore. It was the crown living in her. Jesus wants to live in you. He wants to reign in you. He wants you to be... He want to use your hands. He want to use your legs. He wants to use your, your mouth. He wants you to be a mouthpiece for him. He needs you. Whatever part of the world you live in, God needs you. You tread a path that nobody else can tread. And God needs you on that path. He wants to live in you. He wants to fulfill his
his good purpose through your life. Now, we talk about the queen, we think about ma her majesty and royalty, and let's see, what comes to mind when we think about, well, yeah, royalty, right? We think about riches. Oh, I can't even think of the different words that come to mind, but it's majestic, it's splendor, it's imperial, right? To rule and to reign. I think about the Bible. The Bible is full of kings and some queens. But I think about, well, you know what? Them kings, they, they had it hard in the Bible. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be queen, especially in the Bible days. Well, if I'm serving the Lord, yes, right? Because, oh, Lord, I need you to protect me because I'm telling you, them kings in the Bible, they were getting slaughtered by their own kin for the kingdom. <laughs> now, how royal is that? But anyway, people, for all of us, this is so beautiful. Queen Elizabeth, she was a real queen. A real queen. But I'm here to tell you, well, you know what? Let me tell you what scripture states. Because if you don't know, those who mm, love the Lord, who are saved, this is what the Bible states in 1 Peter 2 and 4. Or 2 and 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. A royal priesthood, a chosen people. Now we're talking about a queen and, and a crown, right? A crown. That crown symbolizes, as grand as it is, right, as glorious and as rich as it is, that kingdom will fade away. It's not going to last. Here on earth, maybe, but it will cease to exist. But the scripture talks about a royal priesthood. A royal, and I'm going to get into some scriptures about it never ending, but a royal priesthood, people, did you even know that? Did you even know this promise existed in the Bible? You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. See, we got to be spiritually minded. We got to be thinking about these things because once again, you guys, it's going to be all she wrote. It's going to be said and done. But those who are in Christ Jesus... Boy, if the royals think there's anything royal about their royalhood, just wait. Wait until heaven. Because these earthly kings and kingdoms and queens and queendoms, they ain't got nothing. It cannot compare to what God has in store for those who love them. But if you don't know it, you are, oh my goodness, you're, you're royal. There's a song, Royal. Is playing in my head right now. But no, you are royal. And you're going to get the royal treatment. Did you not know that? Thank you, Jesus. A chosen people. God chose you. Handpicked you. You might feel like you're forgotten, you're forsaken, you're a castaway. But God chose you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy that we now have. Now, there are some crowns because the, the queen, she wore a crown. I don't know how much it weighed. I don't know how valuable it was, but she wore a magnificent crown, right? But here's the thing about that crown. As glorious as it is, it's going to corrode. Oh, it will fade. It will break. It can be stolen, right? It can be stolen. But this is what the Bible states about a particular crown that those who are in Christ shall receive. It's found in 2 Corinthians 4. And I believe Paul, is, yes, Paul is stating this. Oh, and you know, these are the words too of the queen. I can just hear her words. 
Paul states, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Oh, I believe she said that she fought the good fight. She finished the race. She kept the faith. Once again, she was a, uh, a spiritual woman. She kept her, her faith in God and her faith to that crown, right? Oh, one day, will we be able to say that? Will we be able to, will you be able to say that? That you have fought the good fight? That you finished the race? Finished the race. Don't matter if you came in last. Did you finish the race? Don't matter if you had to crawl to finish the race. But did you finish the race? Did you keep the faith? Paul goes on to state, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. I'm talking about a crown of righteousness, a crown that God is going to bestow to all who are waiting for the appearing, not just waiting, but living for God, living for Jesus, expecting his return. There shall be a crown of righteousness. Ooh, invaluable, right? Can never be taken away. Mm-mm. Wow, never corrode. Wear it for eternity. Speaking of eternity, let's talk about this other crown. In Revelations, Jesus tells a church, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Be faithful unto death. That's Revelations 2, 2 and 10. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. James 1 and 12 states, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. The crown of life, people. If we serve God until death, like the queen did, Till death, she served that crown. What faithfulness, what devotion if we serve Christ unto death. And you know what? Every day won't be perfect. Like the scripture states, through trials, we're going to have trials in life. We're going to doubt at times. We're going to be hurt. We are going to cry. We are going to lament, right? We're going to get angry. We're going to make mistakes. We are going to sin. But we don't get out the race. If we have to stay on our knees at the altar during the duration of this race, people, we don't get out the race. Because there is a crown of life that is promised to those who serve God until the end. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Serving Jesus it's, it's worth it to serve him. It's worth it to get to know him. Because like I stated, one day it's going to be said and done, people. It's going to be all over. It's going to be all she wrote. Period. Right? Just period. And we don't know when that time is going to happen. I have an activity for you all. Try to be mindful. Speaking of mindful, I picked up two two magazines the last couple of weeks this one is breathe and this one is calm but and I haven't read anything out of it yet when I can calm down and breathe I'll flip through the magazines but the activity the challenge rather I have for you all is to try to think spiritually minded Try to think about life outside of this world. And I know it's scary when you think about death. It might feel taboo and you might think or might be superstitious. If I think about it, that means it's going to happen. That's a lie from the devil, okay? You need to think about it because death is a reality. 
But you know what? Eternal life is more of a reality. And we ought to be thinking about these promises of God. We ought to be thinking about being part of a royal priesthood. We ought to be thinking about receiving a crown of righteousness and a crown of life. We ought to be thinking about, okay, how can I get it? What must I do to get it? Because one day, people, it is going to be over. Just like Queen Elizabeth, it just seemed like she was never going to die. I felt that way about my grandma who died last year being 90. I'm like, dang, it just feels like you're just going to live forever. But I knew she wouldn't. But it, it can feel, it can feel like that. But you know what? Her reign came to an end. Queens die. Queens die. We are going to die. And we not only need to prepare with a burial plot and, and life insurance. If you don't have life insurance, people get it. Get it. Because somebody going to need it. You might not need it, but your family going to need it. We need fire insurance because hell is real. But we ought to be spiritually minded thinking about those things. So I challenge you. The activity is... You know, think about the, the crown of righteousness and the crown of life. What does that mean to you? What must you do to get these never fading crowns that no one can steal from you, right? Won't break, won't corrode, won't lose its value. Just begin to think about that and also think about what it means to you in your life to walk in the spirit versus walking in the flesh. How are you walking in the flesh? How have you conformed? And take that to the Lord. Remember, he's not intimidated. God is not trying to judge us or condemn us. He, There will be a time of judgment and condemnation. But don't let that be the reason why you don't take it to God in prayer. He wants you to take everything to him and work it out. He wants to be your counselor, your life coach. He wants to be your 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 friend. He wants to be your doctor, your attorney. Your, your, he wants to be your everything. And we can take everything to him. And with that being said, you all, this day is beautiful. Oh, did I tell you guys? Did I show off my my fall pants these are from costco i wore these once a couple weeks ago and then i had the thought wait a minute i'm going to save these for fall i picked up oh i love them i got several pair last year and then costco brought some new colors back and this is one of the new colors ah so pretty so fall right <laughs> i'm gonna wear these a lot i don't have a lot of fall well, I don't buy a lot of clothes anymore. When I do buy clothes, it's normally from Costco or literally Sam's Club. I have a lot of clothes already. Well, you guys, with that being said, I'm a change because I only put this on to do this video. <laughs> yeah, I got dressed up just to do a video. I'm going to go for a walk. But you know what? I didn't take out anything for dinner. I don't know what we're probably have a salad man well with that being said you all if you like this video why not like it give me a big thumbs up if you have not subscribed why not consider doing so why not consider hitting that notification bell and check out my pictures at the end of this video and be on the lookout for my video sharing the tree the actual tree when i get it in <laughs> Once again, you all, happy fall. It's fall, y'all. It is fall, y'all. People, I'm about to rejoice. I'm not going to do it in this video, but let me tell you, I get real happy. <laughs> it is fall, y'all. I'm so excited. And with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. As always, blessings.